So picking up where we left off, the next part that we're going to do is add the orbits and animate the planets going around their orbit. First thing we need to do here is create NURBS primitive circle. Now again, the same way we did with the planets, we're going to want to duplicate this to create nine orbits and then rename each one to coincide with the planet. Now if you notice, when you type a space in Maya, it becomes an underscore. The underscores replace spaces in all cases. That's why up top you can see we did the solar system, we did it with the underscore. We want to have that um, to keep it consistent. So go ahead and name all of these uh, the planet name underscore orbit. All right, now that we have those set up, we're going to scale those to where we want them to be. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the math that we have for the size of the orbit and add 100 to it to make sure we are out of the diameter of the sun. So what I'll do is I will type these in and hand you this, and you can follow along as we go. First thing we're going to do is go back to the channel box. We're going to select the Mercury orbit. We're going to scale this to 104.163. Venus. We're going to scale the orbit to 107.767. Earth. We're going to scale to 110.745. Okay, now that we have our scales to the right size, we're going to switch back to the perspective view. And you can actually zoom out and see how wide these go. Now, this is a good example of the size and scale that we're working with here. This is a rather large model. So there are going to be times that you're going to want to select things over here instead of selecting in the viewport. And a perfect place to start for us is with Earth. Um, but the first thing we're going to want to do is extend the range of our slider. Right now we're at 24 frames. And for now, let's set this to 20,000. We're going to want to set our first frame to zero. And our last frame to the 20,000. Now we're not keyframing any of this, but you might as well just go ahead and get this set for now for later reference if you need it. So we're going to select Mercury, uh, the Earth first, sorry, and we're going to focus in on the Earth. We're going to select the Earth's orbit by command clicking. We are going to go to the animation submenu. Make sure you're there. Okay, we're going to go to animate, motion paths, attach to motion path. We're going to make sure that we have changed our settings from the default, which is time slider, to start end. Start time is going to be zero. The end time is going to be what we're going to consider a year, which is 100 frames. And we click attach. Now, if you notice, the Earth is gone from our field of view. We still have it highlighted here. We hit F to see where it is. And you can see we're now attached to the orbit and a different location. If we scroll to the sun, you can actually see that the Earth has moved uh, to the top right here. Okay. The next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our animation flows. So we're going to rewind back to the beginning, we're going to hit play, and as you can see, the Earth is moving. Oh, sorry, select the Earth, and so you can see, stop. And you'll actually be able to watch the Earth move around. But notice it has stopped because we are way past the 100 frames that we set. You see it moving around here. And once we hit 100 frames, we are stopped. So what we're going to want to do is cycle this and repeat this uh, to infinity. To do that, we keep Earth selected. Go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. 
make sure that the earth is selected if hit F to focus and now in 2013 I have mine set to uh, default to a curve so first thing we're gonna need to do is change our tangents and we're gonna want a linear tangent and that means it goes directly from one to the other there's no ramp going in or a ramp coming out next thing we're gonna do is go to curves post infinity cycle now when we rewind here our planet should go all the way around until infinity notice we have circled all the way past once twice and a third time okay and hit escape to stop rewind back and that's how we're going to repeat for all of these other planets so one more time we're going to take we're going to start with mercury we're going to zoom in on it so we can get some sort of sense of where we're at we're going to go to the mercury orbit by command clicking selecting it we're going to animate motion paths attach to motion paths options for mercury we're going to use an end time of 24 and we're going to click attach now if we notice it has moved then we have been successful we select mercury again hit f and move we notice that it is attached to the path we're going to go to window animation editors graph editor select all of the tangents by marquee selecting around them. these are tangents here we're going to make sure that they are linear and curves post infinity cycle and if we press play scroll out we should see mercury spinning around at the same time as earth going at its own speed because of course it's closer one more time just to make sure you have this venus we're gonna select venus and then we're going to select its orbit oh sorry if we select venus first we hit f we can focus in on it commands uh, select its orbit animate motion to paths attach to motion path now for venus we are going to use 62 is our end time and click attach again if it is moved it has done what it needed to do we select it make sure that we are attached and it is on the line we go to window animation editors graph editor marquee select select all the tangents make it linear curves post infinity cycle okay so i'm going to go ahead and finish the rest and you go ahead and do that i'll have the numbers posted up as you pause it okay good so now that you have that done you should be able to hit play after rewinding and hit play and see all of your planets moving around of course the inner solar system is going to move much faster pluto is going to take more length than you have the entire time of your slider but as you notice it's still moving slowly and gradually out there and the rest of them are as well now the next thing that we're going to want to do is we want to create a sense of moon orbits now for our current planets there are hundreds and hundreds of moons on all of these different ones. The only one that we're really going to worry about in this instance is Earth, um, because that, of course, is the most relative to us. So we're going to focus in on the Earth. We're going to rewind back to the beginning, focus in on it. And we're again going to create an Herb's Primitive Circle. All right. We're going to go to the top view, and we're going to drag it out to where our earth is by holding the x down and lining it up here then gonna focus in on it and what we're gonna do is without holding the x we're just gonna move the orbit around i suggest scaling it up a little bit selecting the scale tool and say right around there would be good 1.35 i guess is fair enough Again, we'll go back to the perspective. We can keep, take a look. Yeah, that'll work for this example and what we're looking for. Okay. Next thing we're going to want to do is create polygon primitives and create a sphere. And this is going to be our moon. So let's name that moon. And then the NURB circle that we created, we should call moon. Oop. 
moon orbit to go along with everything else. Consistency goes a long way. All right, so we're going to want to make sure then that we can connect this. Now uh, let's bring that over, sorry, to here. Again, we're going to animate motion paths, attach to motion path. Here, I'm just going to set this for now. Um, it's nowhere near Mercury, so we're just going to set this at a 30 to get, you know, somewhat consistent. We notice our moon automatically zaps to position, and it is humongous. So we're going to want to scroll that down in size, of course. Now the moon is actually, I want to say 0.22 relative size. Now, of course, this is a little bit off scale, but for what we're going for, this should work nicely. And then we can click on the moon. Notice it looks like Neptune at the moment. Assign a new material. We're going to do a Lambert. We're going to do... Here, there's our Lambert. We're going to do file. And the file we're going to choose is the moon. And we're good to go there. Okay, now if you notice when you rewind and hit play... The moon will spin, but it did not take off with the Earth. So what we need to do is, once again, the same way we did with Saturn and attach the ring, we need to attach the moon's orbit to Earth. So we select the moon's orbit, we middle click, and drag it up and connect it to the Earth so that it is connected together. Now, if we rewind back, it will go with it. One thing that we had forgotten is to make sure that when we've selected our moon, we do our graph editor as well, animation editors, graph editor, we're going to do focus on the entire curve, and we're going to want to make sure that this goes to infinity as well, and make sure that we can loop as much as we need to. So with everything zoomed back out and ready to go, we can rewind, hit play, and you can actually follow as everything moves around. We've got a nice orbit going. We've got our moon orbiting around our planet. And that'll be the end of step two. If we take a quick render here, we can probably see a nice example of our basic solar system. In the next uh, example, we're going to adjust the lighting adjust the particles, create some stars in the background, and add an asteroid belt.